right, welcome. Uh, today's clearing is on standing in your truth. All righty. So let me just tune into that one for a moment. I love people that give me these titles and then I got to go digging to see what they're really about. All right, so, okay, let me just check the frequency. Okay, so basically, aha, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when people basic come into the world, it's kind of like, whatever their parents are holding, whatever um, f uh, energies and frequencies that they're bringing in with them, they're still affected by that. And the reason I'm saying that is because that feeling where we can't just truly be ourselves, and I think everyone can relate to that, where there'll be experiences or times, especially in um, situations where maybe there's a lot of people or there's a group or even in your own family or it can be with anything or anyone. It can even be with your partner, your beloved, your um, parents, your siblings, it doesn't matter. Somehow you've all learned or we've all learned that telling the truth or, or speaking what we're really experiencing or even having boundaries, even though we're uh, encouraged to have boundaries, somehow we've interpreted that, that we're not supposed to just say what we feel. We're not supposed to tell the truth, okay? And it actually creates like almost like a physical sensation in the body uh, where, we, where we really can feel like something inhibiting, like it's a holding back, okay? And it can be, you know, it's like little simple things too where, um, you know, it's like not really being able to just say or ask for what you really want. And to stand in one's truth also means you're risking exposing your beliefs, your, um, you know, the parts of you that are kind of like hidden from the world. You know, it's like we don't always just really want people to know. I mean, even a good one is even with the um, like the elections that are coming up, sometimes people will feel into who, what somebody else is feeling before they'll even say who they really want to vote for, okay? Or, you know, or even saying who they want to vote for, there can be like a discomfort in the body or a nervousness or a fear or anxiety that someone's going to judge them. So part of that piece around standing in our truth there's a, there's a lot of fear in that. There's a lot of um, anxiety in that. You know, it's like we, we don't want to risk losing uh, someone's approval because if we risk losing their approval, then it actually equates to losing love, losing acceptance, losing being a part of, okay? So the last thing you want to do is be ostracized because of your you know, who, your beliefs are what, you've, what you value. So we've learned how to hide that. And you may remember as a child growing up and, and sometimes maybe you were curious about something or maybe you, you felt really strongly about something and <laughs> your parents or whoever your caretakers were, you know, shamed you or belittled you or, or humiliated you or punished you or, you know, did something where you began to believe not safe, okay? But notice the intensity of the feeling, like when you think about different situations where you're experiencing that kind of like that grab or that hold or that anxiety or nervousness where you're not able to just be yourself. Notice the intensity of it because the intensity does not warrant unless you've been totally beaten and you know what I mean, like really humiliated in this lifetime. We're not really having public humiliation like we did in the past. You're not being hung or beheaded or eviscerated for expressing and sharing your opinions or your beliefs. That's not happening in our country now, okay? So the intensity that you're experiencing is definitely coming from past incarnations, past experiences, and you're still carrying the trauma in your body right now. If you weren't, you wouldn't be so uncomfortable. You'd, you'd, it'd be, you'd be more freer to just share and be who you are. So again, it's like having to hide in some ways with some people who you are. Now there are, there are often times we have like maybe one person or maybe two in our life where we can just be 100% ourselves. 
Like 100%, no matter what, you can say everything. You might have one, okay? You might have two. Rarely will you have three, <laughs> okay? So keep in mind, too, this isn't about anybody else. It's not about, you know, any, anybody else's thoughts or feelings or beliefs or their judgments. It's all about us because the frequency and the energy that we're experiencing is inside of us. That's why we're not standing in our truth because we can't because it's in us. The feeling, the frequency, the anxiety, the fear, whatever those energies are, are inside of us. We're not you know, feeling somebody else's stuff, we're feeling our own. And that's what locks us up. That's what like grabs that throat or just grabs the belly or feel like you're getting whacked in, in your in your physical body because it's all this frequencies inside that are letting you know danger, danger, danger. Okay, not safe. So when we really look at where is this really coming from, then we have to look at who you are as a soul being, as a soul evolving and all that you have experienced throughout your incarnational experiences. And many things are gonna come from past incarnations, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of people who don't understand or don't even don't know that we truly do have past incarnational experiences. And some people think that's just a belief or whatever. It's just a, it's just a fact, you know, you can track back, you can see people's li past lives, you can see our own. But basically, in the evolution of your soul evolving, you have direct experiences where you've learned that it's not safe to express yourself, to share your, your deepest places or the places that in our world now that might feel conflict or, um, you know, like if you're dealing with fanaticism or you're dealing with um, people that are totally asleep or you're dealing with people that are more awake, you know, you try to meet everybody where they are. Have you, have you noticed how when you're around people, you know, you let you kind of listen to what they're saying and then you try to meet them as though that's what you think and that's what you believe. Does anybody do that? <laughs> or, or you don't say anything, you know, it's like be quiet, don't say anything. Okay, so there are so many factors that are contributing to this, not just your past incarnational experiences. But if you were, hang on a second, someone has been eviscerated, who is it? You're right there, right there. Yep, okay. So I'm just gonna use you just for kind of like explaining how this can really, how this is gonna affect many other pieces of your life. Okay, so, so um, just imagine being in a time when that kind of torture, that kind of horrible way of killing somebody, that slow, slow death. I mean, that's like intense because they cut you open, they start pulling out the intestines out of the body and you're still, you're alive, okay? So first of all, you get the cut and then you get the pulling out and everything starts to get really wacky, okay? And, and, and then sometimes they would, after they got to a certain point, then they cut your throat, okay? But basically, it's all about torture. So when I'm looking at um, this particular person with that kind of experience, and I look back at that lifetime, see another thing too, like the thought of certain types of tortures, or cer certain types of, uh, of um, you know, ways of being killed, like thinking about being stoned to death or being hung or being beheaded or being pulled apart, you know, they stretch you out, that kind of stuff. Um, all the different ways of, the, of torture, the ones that you have a reaction to usually means you've had that experience, okay? Like you can hear about something and it could be like, yeah, wow, that's really intense, but you don't have a big reaction. And other things you can hear about and your whole body has a reaction. You've had that experience. That's why you're remembering, or that's why your body is having that kind of uh, frequency inside. So when we look at why and what happened, hang on a second, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically, mm -hmm, this all has to do with telling truth and being, it was like being someone at that time was literally like really a, a big energy, like had a very strong opinions and strong, strong feelings about something. And it was going against like, um, like people that were in places of power, 
Um, and in, in that, they literally took him and, I mean, it was like public humiliation. So not only was it just the evisceration, it was like all the, the community, the people were there to witness all this, okay? So what that's, how that's gonna affect this person is, like there's a, a, a real, like the throat's like, like don't say a word, don't tell, you know what I mean? It's like there's a, there's a choking sensation almost in the physical body. And, and then also too, there's like a lot of, like there's, there's a shame frequency as well, because when you're being publicly humiliated and that kind of intense experience, those, those energies, those, those feelings, those, the terror, all of that gets anchored into the psyche, but when you leave the body, it stays in the soul imprint, so to speak, and you carry it with you. And so when you've had really intense experiences, you're gonna be a little cautious. And then also in this lifetime, how many parents are telling you how to be appropriate? Like, don't be hitting people with your purse. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't, it's like, don't, don't say things, you know, have, have manners, <laughs> so you're learning, not, you know, not to, not to express yourself. And yet, like I said before, the grab is much greater than the actual now situation, okay? So we're dealing with all your incarnational experiences and the things that you've carried forth with you and the traumas and the shock are still in your physical body and they, everything is affecting you right now. If you think about this lifetime and think about what you have lived in this lifetime, okay, just this lifetime alone, you're gonna find that there's lots of trauma, there's lots of beliefs, there's lots of programming, there's lots of, you know, um, serious, painful energy in the body from here, right here. Now just imagine compounding that let's just even say 10 lifetimes. And just imagine each lifetime something was happening. You know, you, rarely do you come into the planet and have this awesome, beautiful experience where there is no trauma, there's, you know, your every need is taken care of, everything that you want, your heart's desire, you're so loved and wanted. It just doesn't happen. I mean, part of what we're doing here is learning and growing and expanding, but the only way to do that is through direct experience. So you wanna know yourself in different ways. And even though it's like horrendous when it's happening, you know, when you're up there making these agreements to have these experiences, you don't have memory of the physical body and what the intensity of that is like but you're also not attached to the physical body. It's when you come in to here that you think you are the body, and of course, when you feel pain, you're identifying with that's my pain, that's physical pain, and then emotional pain. So when you've brought forth lots of memories or lots of traumas and lots of shock, lots of, lots of um, physical things that have happened to you because you're just telling your truth or, or standing in your truth, it's terrifying. And I, and I can tell you straight up, people that are like healers, like myself and several people here, um, almost every single person who's a healer has an issue with standing their truth. And they're gonna hold back who they are, they're gonna w limit their visibility because it's not safe, okay? So healers need a lot of clearings on that kind of stuff. Not joking, joking either. Because, you know, it's like if you've been beheaded and you know, it's like all that stuff, the witch hunts and all the persecutions and all these different things. And anybody who is a leader in some way, whether it's a religious leader or whether it's a, you know, a clan leader, the leaders are always the ones that everybody looks to. And in some ways they try to, either they are against the leader or they wanna make the leader happy and they try to become like the leader or carry the beliefs or, you know what I mean? It's like, like followers. If you look at followers, go to church, it doesn't matter where you go, look at the followers, what are they all doing? They're following the leader, <laughs> follow the leader. So, so, you know, it's like it's everywhere. All, every single human being in some way is withholding or hiding some part of their life or some part of them that they don't want to share because it's not safe. So it's really, tr 
true that sometimes it's not appropriate to share everything about yourself. But the difference is, is that there's not a charge in the body. Okay, there's just a, um, a recognition that, oh, I can't be saying Lucifer just woke up <laughs> until, but to everybody because they're going to be shocked. They're going to be like, what is she talking about? They're going to be saying things like, oh my goodness, she must be a devil worshiper or something. So there's times and places where we, we know we, we do feel into what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate. And, but it's, it's different when there is no charge in the body, okay? So it'd be different if, if I was feeling afraid to talk about what's really happening on the planet as opposed to recognizing you can't hear me. This is gonna go over your head. You have no indoctrination about what I'm talking about. You have no clue about what the unseen realms hold and present for us. You're like a mainstream person with very limited consciousness. Well, what good is it gonna do to share with you things that are just gonna rile you up and make you upset and also you won't understand. So there's a way to plant seeds, but there's also that place where, you know, we don't, we don't feed information to those who are not ready to receive it, okay? But it's also important too, that to know that it's really okay not to share your whole life with the whole world, okay? You know, it's like maybe you prefer, maybe you're a man and you prefer men, but you don't wanna tell the whole world. That's totally fine, but if you've got a charge in there, then that's the part that we want to unravel. That's what we want to release, is the charge, okay? It doesn't matter, people. This is the thing. Nothing really matters. I'm telling you straight up. Nothing really matters, okay? In a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, when you're dead and gone, Nobody matters, nothing matters, you're forgotten, okay? It's your own beliefs, it's your own attachments that make things feel like they matter, that they're important. So basically, it's really all about what's important to you, what matters to you, and who are you? And what we want to unravel are the charges, the zings, the frequencies that make you feel like you can't like you're, you're like literally like you're bound up inside so that you know that bound up feeling where you have to protect yourself but you think you're protecting others when in reality it's really always about us people everything we do everything we share everything we you know present is all about us anyway and we can think that other people's opinions are important, but it's really our own fears or our own anxieties that keep us from sharing who we are. So some of the interferences, because we, um, some people may not have heard or are aware of this, it's not just your past incarnations, okay? So feel into this. Whatever you come into the world with, whatever beliefs you have, whatever programming your parents have also given you, whatever traumas you've experienced, where however you begin to shut yourself down or where you begin to close your heart down for, to protect yourself or in any way where you learned that sharing your toys you're supposed to, even though you don't want to, so you act like you want to, when in fact you really don't want to, but you're not gonna tell anybody you don't want to because you're afraid they're gonna judge you and then you'll be ostracized and then you'll be the bad guy, okay? So whatever you have inside, I guarantee you, if you've had a time where you felt like you didn't wanna be here, anybody have that experience once or twice? Anybody ever think about checking out? Anybody ever feel like you don't wanna be in this body? Do you ever feel like you just, you know, hate being here or those kinds of things? If you've ever had that thought even one time, you've opened the door to let other things come in. 
If you don't want to be in your body, you have open doors and many, many, many frequencies are in your body. And keep in mind that whatever your trauma is, whatever, whatever your pain is, whatever you've lived, then you're going to have those inside of you as well. Because energy attracts like energy. So whatever's in your, whatever your traumas are, whatever you've experienced, I don't care if it's an act, car accident, it doesn't matter whether if you had alcoholic parents or you got beaten or you got raped or you got um, shamed or humiliated or if you got you know, pushed aside and were disregarded, it doesn't matter whatever you have lived, you're gonna have more and more and more of that same kind of frequency in your body that isn't even you. Which brings me to this. So what if you, what if, what if, what if, what if your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs and your programming are not you? What if that is not you? What if all those mind thoughts that you're running and all the anxieties and all the beliefs, they're not you? Who would you be if you didn't have any of those? What would life be like if no thought came in or no feeling rose up inside that grabbed you, who would, what would you be doing? You'd be pretty liberated, I would think. So, your thoughts are not yours, your beliefs are not yours, your traumas are not yours, your conclusions are not yours, your humiliation, your shame is not yours, but it's inside of you and you've carried it. Here's another thing people don't understand. People's, people's energy enters your body. For example, let's just say that someone is being um, beaten, like a little kid, father's upset, starts beating the kid. Okay, so that father's energy is really big, he's angry, he's out of his body, and when he's out of his body, he's pushing his energy into that child, okay? What happens is that child can be traumatized their entire life and they can carry it over into their lifetimes because they haven't released the energy that is not theirs. They're still having memory. They're still, it's as though it's still happening. I just saw somebody like not even a week ago and she's like in her 60s and her dad had violated her, she's still weepy over it, she's still crying over it, okay? So I gave her five minutes and it's over. What did I do? I took his energy out of her body. I retrieved her back out of him, took his energy out of her, cleared the trauma, and it's like it's over. You know, it's really unfortunate that our world has to suffer throughout their entire lives with the pain that they lived as a child or even as, it doesn't matter when, whenever you've had any kind of pain, whenever you've had anything that happens to you and you have to live with it for the rest of your life. The thing is, what people don't know is you don't have to live with it. I'm telling you straight up, clearings, cle this is why they're called clearings. We clear the energy out of your body and it's as though it never happened because it's just energy. Even your emotional energy is just energy. That's all it is. And energy can be moved. We can shift it, we can release it, we can clear it out. So not only do you have discarnate beings, you have perpetrators energy, you have dead people's energy, you have energies and, uh, from other people, from other uh, past lives of people you interacted with that you had experiences with, and those are still with you unless they have been released. Now tell me where on planet Earth they're going to tell you how to release these frequencies. They're not. Because nobody knows. Okay, so <clears throat> every, you are the culmination of everything that you've experienced as well as all the interactions with all the people you've ever been with. That mean, includes everybody you've hated and everybody you've loved and everything in between. It also includes all your conclusions. You draw conclusions. Once you draw conclusions, you begin to shut your heart down, thinking you're going to protect yourself from ever having that experience again. And guess what? Now you shut yourself off to your own love. Now you shut yourself off to yourself. 
Now you can't even find yourself. But yeah, you're protecting yourself from being hurt again. Not. <laughs> it's not happening. So clearings release energy. And most everything in your energy field, even the past life memories, are not yours to keep with you today. You don't need them. You've been there, done that. You got that lesson. You want to be eviscerated again? I don't think so. That was intense. Okay? A horror, trauma. So what we do in the clearing is we go after what's inside, what's, what's blocking you from just standing in your truth and being yourself, being who you are. Okay? So basically, to get the most from this experience, if you think about a time and just bring it to your awareness when you remember perhaps, or just even remember the feeling of like, wanting to say something or not wanting to say something. I mean, it can be something so simple as, who are you voting for? <clears throat> okay? <coughs> or, or whatever that is. Or maybe, you have, maybe you're with people who like Trump. Or maybe there's the Hillary clan. Or maybe there's, what was that other guy? Um, Bernie Sanders. And yet, you know, it's like you're not going to go up against some of the people that have strong beliefs. Maybe you will, because sometimes people like to do battle. But at the same time, there'll be other areas <laughs> where you won't be doing battle, where you won't be telling the truth, okay? This also, you guys, listen to me. This affects every facet of your life. Even, just think about this. Okay, so being with your partner intimately, can you tell everything? Can you speak up and share the truth and say what you want or what you don't want or what you like or what you don't like, okay? That's also part of standing in your truth, okay? So that it affects everywhere. It's like this insidious little energy that just kind of goes everywhere in every part, every facet of your life. And the ability to just be yourself is totally blocked and inhibited because of these energies, these frequencies in the body. Okay? So, by letting yourself think about a time or a situation or an event or a person or whatever you're aware of where you can literally feel that sensation where you feel like it's unsafe to express, it's not, you don't want to go there, you don't want to speak that. What I want you to do is I want you to light that up for me. And when you light it up for me, you do that by remembering that, but also how does it make you feel when you think about it? It's the, it's here's, here's what happens. When you let yourself feel into a frequency, what happens is, is you show me a path. If you don't do anything, you show me nothing. You guys, I'm not a psychic, okay? I'm not going to go tracking, looking. You need to show me what's, what it looks like, okay? When you do that, there's a feeling. And that feeling might have an anxiety. It might be a fear. And if you drop into that, there might be deeper, deeper sensations, deeper frequencies. But the deeper you go into feeling how this makes you feel, the deeper the clearing will be. Okay? Also, I'm going to have you call my presence in to be right beside you, even though I'm right here. So I'm up here, but I'm also with you. And as I split my consciousness, I will be with all of you separately, as though you're the only one I'm working with. Okay? That allows me to reach into your body and start pulling stuff out or releasing and uh, shifting energies and frequencies and allows for a deeper clearing. So you're going to call my presence in. Also, if you've got other people that you want to bring in, just think about them, call them in. I'll see them. We'll be clearing out energies in them. You can call in. I don't care. You can call in whoever you want, however many you want. doesn't matter. They will shift and change, okay? Because we're dealing with energy. Everything's energy.